Portfolio Builder members, welcome to our Thursday Trade Alert where we play the TLT ETF. That's the long end of the Treasury market. And we have a very simple strategy. You have approximately 40% of your portfolio in the SPY, 40% of your portfolio in the TLT, and then you protect it with put options below and it makes it extremely hard to have a losing month. Let's take a look at what's going on in the world and then jump into our portfolio so you can see exactly how we're playing this market. Imagine you had a Twitter account with which you could move global markets at will and face no legal consequences if you traded on your tweets. Just a funny tweet there from uh, Northman Trader, someone I like to follow for technical analysis. Donald Trump, big day of negotiations with China. They want to make a deal, but do I? I meet with the vice premier tomorrow at the White House. I'm highly skeptical we have a deal come out. Uh, but with that said, let's take a look at how we're playing the markets. I'll jump back to the top news and everybody waits in anticipation to see if we can get some sort of deal out of this. So we'll come back to my content I've collected over the last 12 hours. A lot of juicy stuff out there uh, that will give us a good indication of what may come next. Uh, first of all, let me jump to our portfolio. I want to point out that from the highest price in July, which was July 31st, through today, the S&P 500 is down about 2%, a little bit over that, yet our portfolio has racked up a profit of 2.3%. We've averaged 1.6% a month. And we've only had one losing month in July, and that's because I was jumping the gun at predicting Trump would raise tariffs. And you can see right after that in August, we hit a large return of 1.8%. What's this per program all about? Daily on the go income trade alerts. Target return of investment 1% a month. And we've only had one losing month, current average of 1.6. We dropped a tenth overnight. For every $100,000 invested, our goal is to generate a $1,000 profit per month. Income and safety, not growth or speculation. If you hate losing money, you're going to love this program. Our simple 4 ETF portfolio is extremely diversified and all you'll need for your retirement or just generating some extra income if that's where you're at in life. Simplify your holdings, reduce your risk, get better results with less work, and weatherproof your retirement portfolio. My promise to you is that I will protect your assets and show you how to pick the low-hanging fruit. Our put options hanging right below the SPY and TLT ETF make it impossible to lose very much money. And typically, TLT goes down, SPY jumps up, and vice versa. In the long run, they've been traveling up together for the better part of a decade. Now remember, for every $50,000 you deposit at your broker, you'll have $100,000 of buying power. So you can actually get twice the return I'm averaging if you just use all of your portfolio's buying power. The strategy is to trade the SPY ETF, that's the S&P 500 ETF. Now it's almost twice the size of the world's largest hedge fund, Ray Dalio's, $244 billion in assets. It's putting hedge funds and mutual funds out of business left and right. It is an amazing product, and what's really spectacular about it is it has three option expirations a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So if you like to protect your portfolio, have a diverse group of 504 companies, and you want to protect it, every 48 hours, plus generate income or be able to profit from down moves in the SPY. You cannot beat this product, and that's why the world is gravitating towards it at record pace. Meanwhile, we have a play on silver with 600 shares of SLV, that's spot silver, 300 shares of TLT, that's the long end of the treasury market. It's the most sensitive to interest rate changes, and typically if the SPY gets a panic, guess what? TLT shoots up dramatically and offsets any losses. And what we love is when the SPY goes below our put, the losses stop on that side, but the TLT keeps racking up profits. So you can see how this just slowly but surely squeaks out profits in almost all market conditions. And even when we get the prediction wrong, we still make money. Meanwhile, we have a buy and hold position on GDX. That's the mining ETF for gold. And again, we waited for GLD, 
spot gold to get to 1500 an ounce and then we rotated into GDX. So we've been making a lot of profit in the precious metals all year because we know what happens next. The Fed has told us it's quantitative easing and it's going to be at a massive scale worldwide. So you want to make sure you have your precious metals in your portfolio, your bond position as they're going to push rates lower and lower and then I like the SPY if we get a trade deal. No trade deal, we'll be using options to leverage our SPY shares to profit from a down move and join our free webinar uh, in about 50 minutes so I can teach you how to protect from downside risks in your portfolio in a risk-free manner. So you should have a text message hitting your phone right now if you're listening to this uh, and an email in your inbox to join us live where you can actually chat with me about what's going on with our portfolio and how to generate safe retirement income. Now, if you have a little less to put to work or you just want a day off, trade the SPY with 100 shares and the TLT with 200 shares, then buy 200 shares of GDX to get the same general strategy, same risk profile, less work, less capital. And if you really want to generate some huge returns, this is the best setup. Forget about the SPY. Silver has a 250% run up just to get back to 2012 levels and I think it will go far farther because of the situation we're in. It's not just the US housing bubble or the US dot com bubble that's causing trouble now. It's a worldwide debt problem. Folks, we got 16 trillion dollars of negative yielding debt out there which is uh, guaranteed to lose somebody a ton of money. So there's trouble ahead. There will be massive money printing to try to bandage this mess up and that will make the relative value of gold and silver skyrocket for probably the next two to three years. Now if you're missing out on the trade alerts, please call Dean 505-322-7515. This is not a time to be messing around with some sort of buy and hold strategy. If the China trade deal talks break down, which I think there's about a 90% chance they will, you're going to want to follow our strategy because it's so rock solid going into so much uncertainty in the markets. Now, reminder, our paid webinar was yesterday. That replay already went out, so I hope you enjoyed that. If you missed it, today's our freebie webinar. Everyone's welcome to join it. We talk about our strategy and how to safely make money in this market environment. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Click the bell, and there's our disclaimer before we jump into the good stuff. Okay guys, let's take a quick look at some of recent trades and then we will jump into the top juicy news and then we'll head over to our live webinar. Okay, so dollar index remains strong. That's important. That means the rest of the world is having a tough time, which we already knew. Their stock markets are down 20 to 30 percent. They've never gotten back to the highs from 2017. Uh, and meanwhile, U.S. is near all-time high on its stock market. Its treasury market is doing superb with record level uh, bond prices and extreme demand from foreign investors. And meanwhile, the dollar, of course, is headed towards that 100 mark uh, and has been bullish all year long. Yesterday, we gave out a trade alert on the SPY ETF when it was trading at 290.67. And this was going into this trade expecting the trade deal will break down, but we know it won't break down until after the Trump meeting most likely. So we were long the SPY yesterday. And as of recording this video, the SPY went from 290 to 294. So we had a big profit on 40% of our portfolio being long the SPY. But on the other hand, we were protected to the downside. We have the 289 put. So if the SPY goes below the 289 level, the losses stop because we can sell our put for a huge profit plus get to keep that 295 call option we sold. So it's a lot like taking candy from a baby when you sell a call option and then taking advantage of the insurance company, which is Wall Street, when we buy the put. So it's a great setup for us, makes it very uh, relatively risk free to have the courage to buy the SPY ahead of these trade talks. So it's paid off significantly today. Let's take a look at what happened to the other part of our portfolio. So the TLT had a sell-off overnight traveling from, excuse me, let me get today's train, 
traveling from 144.57 to 142.23 for a $2.34 loss. We picked up 17 cents from the option protection and overall lost $2.17 on the TLT. Not worried about it at all, because guess what? If the trade talks break down Friday, TLT is going to fly up. On the other hand, bond yields around the world are negative. Look at Germany, and we will be looking that, at that in a moment. Uh, plus, we have Powell saying the Fed is going to start soaking up massive amounts of treasuries. So this is just another bank bailout. They have loaded up on these treasuries, and they know there's no way they could sell them all unless the Fed buys them. So they've been waiting for this moment, and it has come. So there's very little downside risk on the TLT, uh, but huge protection to our portfolio to be long the SPY. So we remain long the TLT with today's trade alert, but it is with an option caller. So if China pulls out its nuclear weapon, which would be to dump treasuries at a massive rate that could create a spike in yields and a drop in bond prices. So we still have downside protection on the TLT, even though we know the Fed is actively buying up treasuries. In the last 14 days, they've purchased as much as QE1, which is about $100 billion a month. And now the rumor is they're going to tank about 500 to a trillion dollars into the balance sheet of the Fed and essentially let all these banks off their treasury positions and free up ammo to most likely buy the SPY, and that is, again, if we don't have a massive trade war. Uh, if we do get a trade war, I still suspect the banks will be ready to buy the dip after some fear in the markets. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but I do want to point out the TLT has been a huge moneymaker for us. Uh, so far, it's up $82,000 in our portfolio and represents just under half of the total profits we've pulled off in the last uh, 10 months. So let's take a look at some recent trades just to get a feel for it. And in this trade alert, we lost 36 cents on the TLT. Go up a week later, we had $1.94 a share on the TLT. Go a week later, $1.21 a share on the TLT. Go a week later, $1.60 on the TLT. A week later, 34 cents on the TLT. A week later, $1.75 on the TLT, and a week later, $1.72 profit on the TLT. So it's not a big deal to have uh, one loss on the TLT. We're still long. I suspect this is going much higher, and I think it can run up uh, to probably much above 150 at a minimum, maybe up to 160 as we watch these yields go lower and lower. And we'll talk about the big picture in a little bit, uh, but the strategy is working out beautifully. Although our profit for October dropped a little bit because of the sell-off in the TLT, the SPY is traveling up, so the strategy is working brilliantly. And again, if you had looked at your broker statement at the end of July and compare it to today, I'm going to guarantee if you're long stocks and you don't have any gold or bonds in your portfolio, you're quite likely down at least 2%, maybe more like 3 to 5%, depending on how risky your assets are. Our strategy has slowly but surely generated a 2.3% return over the same period. Look at May. How much money did you have in drawdown in losses in May when the S&P 500 crashed 5%? We were up 2.2%. What about last December when we had the Christmas massacre? Did you have a big drawdown? I guarantee you did, but we're up 1.2% in that month. So the strategy works very well. And I want to point out, if you do go to the description box in our video, we have links to everything I'm covering. The first link is our advisory link. The second link is the boot camp. If you want to learn how to uh, really understand the strategy, we have a 16-week boot camp, pricing options. You can read every trade alert I've ever issued, plus this one-hour video that details it. Nothing is password protected. Which advisory out there do you know that does that? Any? Probably not. Track record is also completely open to review every single trade. Now, do note, I don't put the current trade in until we close it out. Uh, and that way, we can protect our content from people who haven't ordered yet. And if you want to look at the content in the presentation today with all the news, that link is also in there as well. So check that out. Click those buttons. And uh, here's just a quick preview of what you'll see. Track record here. Make sure you click these tabs. It has everything. 
scroll around, you got stock trades, option writing, and then option buying. And again, you have each of your portfolios to look at individually. This helps our customers custom design the right strategy for their goals. Uh, plus, you can see the month over month return per strategy uh, on the summary tab, as well as balances start and end. Uh, every little single detail is open for the public for scrutiny. We have nothing to hide and probably one of the most successful advisories out there because everyone actually gets the same result as we do. On the updates page, here's what it looks like. Now, if you did want to organize it per strategy, you can click that and just see the specific trade alert uh, type. Here's your advisory page. No big sales pitch, guys. We just outline what you're going to get, when you're going to get it. Bootcamp is very extensive strategy. Uh, review of the program. First week, we're going to talk macro. Second week, we're going to talk about how to use interactive brokers to do all the trading. Uh, call options, put options, callers, tight versus loose, callers upside down. That's what you're going to want to use when the China trade war breaks, uh, trade talks break down and war incites. How to get a little crypto in your portfolio. We do have a 1% position in Bitcoin and a 1% position in Ethereum, which are up some 300% this year in our portfolio. If you want to build a spreadsheet just like mine, we're going to spend three weeks teaching you how to do it. We give you a copy of the spreadsheet what to do during a financial crisis, what to do after a financial crisis, and then the last two weeks we'll teach a little bit of advanced stuff uh, such as credit and debit spreads, and then when would you possibly want to write a put option? Okay, so that's the end of that, and if you do go to the options page, we have three ordering options with financing plans that go out for 20 months. Now, we look at this as more of a college education or the Rolls Royce, not some subscription that you're going to pay for for the rest of your life. So it's a one-time purchase and then you're done. You get these, this program for the rest of your life and we will help you generate that 1% return per month with extreme precaution. Okay, guys, so I'm going a little fast today because I do want to get ready for our webinar coming up. Here's what's going on in the markets. So first we'll look at some charts. We're long the SPY with the rest of the world really suffering because of the China slowdown. Uh, there's really nowhere else to invest. Their bonds are at negative yielding rates. So there's no sense in buying a negative bond. You know you're going to lose on that if you hold it. Your only hope with the negative yielding bond is that a central bank has to buy it from you at a later date for a profit. And that is going to uh, probably implode on itself in the next several years or maybe even months. Hard to determine when exactly they'll let that bubble pop. Most likely the central banks will print as much money as they possibly can until inflation gets out of control and that's when the party ends. In the meanwhile, the SPY is at least undervalued by around $10. I'm thinking it can go up $20 to $30 if we get a interim trade deal, just a pause in the escalation. Uh, but in the long run, most likely there is no serious deal without some major pain inflicted onto China. Um, so we have an unmovable object and an unstoppable force colliding right now. So meanwhile, we're long the spy. Don't fight the Fed. They're about to pump a trillion dollars into the system and this thing could really fly up. So we have 40% position in this. It's been a little bit of a dud the last few months. Uh, obviously, you can see it's just been trying to get out of this range. And I think with a little positive trade deal, or at least a break in the escalation, that can fly higher. Now, if we do get some nasty comments Friday, we're prepared. And in our webinar today, I'll show you how to own the SPY, sell an in-the-money call, and then buy an in-the-money put to profit very, very well from a downside move. Meanwhile, TLT is most likely headed much higher in the next 12 months, and that's because we can look at the yields around the world. They're around zero to negative, and that's where our rates are headed. The Fed is telling us this. Goldman Sachs is telling us this. So they're dropping rates like a rock in the ocean, and they're printing money. So this is very bullish for these assets. Uh, but there are some things that could get in its way. Silver, we're trading till it gets to 22 to 25 on our Tuesday play. The 2012 run up on silver would push this about 250% higher. 
Uh, but we're not going to trade SLV all the way to that level. Once we're at a higher spot price on silver, which I suspect will top out for the short term around 22 to 25, expect to rotate into the silver miner ETF, SIV. So we did the same play on gold, made a lot of money in our portfolio this year, and I expect we can do the same thing with silver. The only thing that will eventually stop this party of money printing will be inflation. Now we are seeing inflation in China, but the latest print today was nothing for America. The reason we don't see much inflation is because number one, they manipulate the data and the formula uh, to keep those rates low. And then two, uh, the system in which they deploy all this quantitative easing uh, goes to banks, which then loan the money to corporates, uh, to corporate bonds, and then the corporate bonds turn around by their own stocks and so unless stock investors end up taking a lot of profits and then spending that money in the economy, we're not going to see any inflation with this strategy. Uh, so it's just going to bubble up the assets like it has for the last decade. GDX is your gold miner ETF. Uh, and again, this will probably double to get back to the 2012 level uh, in which I think it will go further. FXI is the Chinese large cap ETF which we currently have a short position on with a out of the money put expiring next year. So if you want to follow that trade, make sure you upgrade your account, call Dean. Uh, if we don't get a breakdown in the trade talks on Friday, I do expect to get out of that position. It's 1% total position, but if we get the crash I'm looking for, this will generate a 5 to 10% total return in our portfolio. So uh, we're risking 1% of our total account to generate a five to 10% return. So that's a 500 to 1000% return on this very aggressive out of the money put on FXI. Uh, now, if we don't get the trade deal uh, breakdown on Friday, there's a chance we'll lose around 30 to 50% on this position next week and get out of it. And then we'll look for a new entry point. So it's a good hedge to be brave on the SPY. 30-year Treasury had a little bit of a spike today as trade hopes sparked a big rally in the SPY. Uh, but the big picture is this is going to continue to drop like a rock so we can uh, maintain that large TLT position in a bullish strategy in terms of how we're playing the option callers. Uh, German yields, here you go. That's your best leading indicator for where yields are headed. Uh, and they're headed lower. German bonds are in negative territory. This is the best signal we have to determine the health of China. Can't trust their data, but we can trust the Germans. They're a key trading partner of China, and they are officially in a recession. Their PMI is at 40. Their bond yields are in negative territory. So China is definitely hurting right now, uh, despite whatever else they want to say about that. Crude, we like in the $50 to $70 range. Too low, it signals major problems with growth too high and all the inflation indicators will start roaring up which causes the Fed to hike rates uh, which is terrible for both the TLT and the SPY. So of course if that gets too hot in terms of too high of an oil price we know what to do in our portfolio. Join our webinar today uh, so we can go over that with you. Meanwhile gold sitting at that 1500 level. China and Russia are buying up gold at record pace. They have been doing so for the last decade. They want to get off the dollar dominance. Good luck. Silver at 17. Uh, so while gold has had a huge rally to new highs, silver has not quite caught up with it yet. And that's totally normal. Usually the big dog uh, goes up first. We're seeing this in uh, corporations right now. The small businesses, medium businesses are having a hard time getting capital, hard time keeping employees, all the best benefits and job opportunities are in these top corporations. So the top corporations are doing very well. They have free access to capital, and now we need the medium and small businesses to catch up. And so it's totally natural. I'm expecting Spot Silver to jump up to 22 to 25 to have a relative return uh, compared to gold. And at that point, we're gonna rotate into Silver Miners instead of playing Spot Silver. Two, uh, th really four currencies I'm tracking currently as investment opportunities in our boot camp only we're trading the futures market. Now they're talking about potentially uh, capping the exchange rate on the Chinese currency as part of some sort of deal today. 
uh, which is good for our bootcamp members that we've been on hold to short the Chinese currency. Now, if you had been shorting this currency since 2015 or even since 2018, every futures contract is up um, around $10,000 in the 2018 and uh, the same for the 2015 rally. So that's a huge profit you can make simply shorting CNH in the futures market. So that's a trade for our bootcamp members where we'll have a separate portfolio and essentially we're going to be recommending uh, very soon, most likely one contract as soon as tomorrow. And then as we see the aggression rally up, maybe up to three futures contracts per $100,000 in your portfolio. Every 10 cents this travels higher, that will represent a $1,000 profit in the futures contract. I'm expecting this to go to at least 7.4, maybe 7.8. So at this current price, uh, we have around a $3,500 to $8,000 profit potential per futures contract if they do let their currency devalue ahead of the important December 15th tariff hikes. So uh, we got to make sure those are going to happen and maybe even some more hikes are going to occur uh, to enter that trade. Now the biggest thing that's holding me back on that trade alert for our bootcamp members is the fact that they are talking about fixing the exchange rate. The U.S. does not want China to try to skip around its tariffs by devaluing its currency. Now that is causing massive problems in the financial world. All of China's trading partners are now having to devalue their currency uh, to make the trade fair and similar to what it was prior to China devaluing their currency. That's why you see that strong dollar. And this could be what breaks the camel's back is China lets its currency uh, devalue significantly. Now, if they do that, good luck getting rid of the dollar domination around the world. So that's something we're definitely watching. Uh, on the same breath, if you follow Kyle Bass, follow Kyle Bass. He's all about shorting the Hong Kong dollar. Massive capital flight out of Hong Kong. ATM runs, protests. Carrie Lam's threatening to uh, freeze people's bank accounts. They've outlawed these masks. So that scene continues to get more and more rocky. And this could be a potential second trade uh, for our program. What's nice about this one is there's very little risk that they will improve the exchange rate. But if they were to let go or let that exchange rate slip, uh, could be some massive profits as this has not moved like the CNH has, which is the Chinese currency. Here's your dollar index. Again, as long as the dollar remains strong, we want to be long U.S. products and short everyone else. Um, and this is despite the Fed dropping rates twice this month and adding $200 billion to the system. So it just shows you uh, how severe this dollar uh, liquidity problem is currently. There's not enough dollars to go around the world. Meanwhile, Bitcoin and Ethereum do represent a small part of our portfolio. If you don't want to trade these, fine. Just have 10% in GDX. Same basic idea. Uh, but this does look very bullish to me, and I suspect uh, as the trade war escalates, Bitcoin can get back to that 20,000 high it had recently, uh, and Ethereum, remember, that was trading above 1,000. So this one has a huge potential gain. My plan on this is as Bitcoin gets to more absurd levels to rotate to lower and lower market cap coins uh, and continue to maintain around a 2% position in cryptocurrency. So right now it's 1% Bitcoin, 1% Ethereum. As soon as we see a big move in Bitcoin, look for me to sell the Bitcoin and probably rotate into either Ripple or one of the other cryptocurrencies. Um, I also like the Binance coin and EOS. Uh, Telegram just had a coin come out. So we'll be looking at uh, where to place our bet in the crypto market as the trade talks break down. Uh, which I think has a high probability of happening. Timing is the tough part. Here's the rest of the content I've collected, and then we'll jump into our webinar. And good morning, Tom. Thanks for saying hello in the chat. If you're listening live, please throw a shout out and say hi. Let us know you're out there. And uh, we love getting some, some chatting going on in there. U.S. Chamber of Commerce official, there's a possibility of a currency agreement in U.S.-China trade talks in exchange for a delay in tariff hikes. So the tariff that may be delayed might be that October tariff, which was only a 5% jump.
jump from uh, 20 to 25, I believe. So not a big hike anyways, um, but we already delayed it from October 1st when their holiday began and pushed it to the 15th. So that's coming in five days. We'll see if there's any deal around this. This is critical for our trade shorting their currency. So we want to make sure this does not happen uh, if we are going to put on that trade. Uh, meanwhile, the impeachment drama continues. We had Fox do a poll where it said 51% of their viewers wanted Trump impeached. Uh, meanwhile, Pelosi has not had a formal vote, so we're keeping close eye on this. And I still suspect they will not uh, vote on impeachment because it will uh, dig up a lot of dirt on themselves if this continues to escalate. So it's very interesting. One of the demands from China was to uh, relieve pressure on a company, uh, Costco, which is supposedly just a big shipping company, but they've been caught uh, moving around contraband around the world, smuggling all kinds of stuff, and is really thought of as part of their uh, military branch of the naval force. Uh, so here's all the shipping routes they want to do. And guess what? Mitch McConnell and his wife have extreme ties to, uh, to the shipping business in China. Her father owns a major company uh, that is reliant on China. So yet again, we do see the Chinese have uh, put their money all over the United States in every corner possible to try to maintain this deal they've had, this sweetheart deal they've had over the last uh, few decades. So, of course, he's been very quiet on the China talk, and it'd be interesting uh, if, does China have enough people paid off in the U.S. government to try to impeach Trump? Something we got to keep close eye on. Donald Trump, where's Hunter Biden? He has disappeared while the fake news protects his crooked daddy. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, China buys record volumes of U.S. pork amid trade talks, almost as if the U.S. has leverage amid China's food crisis. China's having massive food inflation. Um, there, th there's a bunch of screenshots here if you want to read all of this. I, Secret Empires is an eight-hour audio book you can find for free on YouTube if you search it or buy the book. It's great, very detailed uh, history of all of this. The bottom line is a bunch of, uh, mainly John Kerry and Joe Biden's sons have been uh, created, and Joe Biden's brother have been creating all these different investment funds and going around bragging about how everybody wants to invest in Joe Biden. They've raised billions of dollars and done all sorts of things. Uh, one of those investments was from China, and it ended up buying out a bunch of tech companies in the US and then transferring those uh, intellectual property rights over to China. So uh, that's why I'm a little bit skeptical we'll have an impeachment because it's gonna bring all this into public light and uh, looks like Biden's done, so I think Hillary may come out and try to run as the Democrats definitely don't want Warren Elizabeth in there. So tons of scandal. If you want to look at all this, click the doc link. It's all right here, pretty well laid out. Um, but if you really want to dig into it, Secret Empires, great book. And this came out at least a year ago, maybe two years ago. So all this stuff about Ukraine and China has been out in the public for a considerable amount of time. Meanwhile, we're seeing pressure on Apple to support China and so we also saw this with the NBA. This is clearly going to force U.S. companies to pick a side in the next several months. Reminds me of the kneeling to the anthem in the NFL. Uh, now we're seeing it at a much bigger uh, global stadium uh, with the NBA, China, U.S. And now we're seeing uh, companies like Apple remove police tracking app used by Hong Kong protesters from the App Store. Uh, they also removed the Taiwan Taiwanese flag from the Hong Kong user's phone app. The new gamma spot where a lot of selling will happen uh, is at 295. So a lot of people are trying to sell their spy at 295 right now. We have to break past that to potentially get a big break out on the spy. This is thanks to Nomura, uh, who I think is the best at, it's a huge Japanese bank, very good at figuring out where triggers will occur. 
CPI continues to plunge, so no pressure on the Fed to raise hikes. Better lower rates. I support more permanent steps to ensure the proper functioning of repo and other short-term funding markets. Dallas Fed, Robert Kaplan, translation, more permanent increase in the Fed's balance sheet. Last night we had rumors that China would leave a day early, futures market was selling off, then the U.S. said, oh, we might have a deal with the currency pact. Market flew back up, so it's been going back and forth. Market's extremely news sensitive right now. Uh, meanwhile, people continue to protest at NBA games. Free speech is a universal value. They're getting kicked out of the game. Shame on the NBA. Picture of the uh, Munchen going into the trade talks. Apple deletes Taiwanese flag emoji from Hong Kong iPhones. General Motors says sales in China fell 17%. A lot of people like to look at the car sales sector for a leading indicator. And the bottom line is they have to keep making these new cars to keep their profits up. Otherwise, these companies uh, could cause probably a recession all in their self. Uh, and meanwhile, there's gigantic parking lots where they hide all the used cars. Um, people have joked about China buying up these used cars from America, but uh, they don't want them. They're trying to go electric because they have too much uh, pollution. It's not quantum physics. China's human rights abuses are well documented and nothing new. Let's face it, it's all about the money. Don't hide behind the I'm not versed enough bullshit when you spout off on everything else. Steve Kerr, no comments on the Maury China NBA situation, says he's been reading about it, doesn't feel versed enough to comment. <sighs> Full back and forth. So this poor guy was creamed yesterday uh, by Trump on TV. The latest, the Chinese delegation worked late into the evening. They are, went back and forth on if they are staying or not for Friday talks. The sense is that the moves this week with entity list and visa restrictions soured the atmosphere. They could still stay, it depends on today. We've got this Chinese guy uh, ripping up his tickets for the first game in NBA, I believe. China asked to end sanctions on its biggest shipping company, Costco. Now, again, this is tied to Mitch McConnell. Uh, now, while Joe Biden and John Kerry's sons did not do a very good job of hiding anything, Mitch McConnell uh, has only accepted about $5 million from his wife's father. So they have done a good job at hiding their ties to China. Uh, but that's a very alarming issue because of... Uh, if McConnell's not supporting Trump in the uh, other side of the, the branch, then impeachment might actually be on the table, and we may have a co-op going under, under our feet here. So I'm keeping a close eye on that to see what developments come. Uh, board members of ExxonMobil make $330,000 a year, one of the most prestigious energy companies in the world. Hunter Biden, with no industry knowledge or duties, was being paid $600,000 annually. All of this while the average annual salary in Ukraine is $1,700 a year. So we'll see what comes of all this hype, uh, but I hard to predict that as well. U.S. Secretary Ross says tariffs forcing China to pay attention U.S. Commerce Secretary says China trade practices have gotten worse. Dueling U.S.-China trade headlines spark chaotic volatility in the futures markets. We covered that. Gold ETF holdings hit all-time highs after the longest stretch of inflow since the financial crisis, and that's because everyone knows what's coming. Massive quantitative easing. Joe Biden personally paid $900,000 by Burisma, according to Ukraine minister in bombshell ad admission. Peter Schiff is having a great year. Uh, he's been all about the long gold. Well, that's all he does. But gold is going to be money again because of gigantic global debt time bomb. 
And I believe he is correct on the global debt time bomb part. Here's the rumor about leaving early because of no progress on the trade talks. Offshore Yuan quite busy this morning. SM, SCMP reported that China and U.S. made no progress on deputy level trade talks. White House had no idea, and so we're going back in time here. And so I think that's a good, good conclusion for where we're at today. I collect the content and put it in chronological order. So once again, if you want to check out everything we covered today and get even a little more of the content, uh, it's all right here in the description box. Really appreciate everybody's time, and don't forget to join our live webinar in 15 minutes. Check your email now for the access link. Thanks again.